So today we're going to talk about pacing. Now when we use our GPS most of the time, it's usually to navigate from point A to point B. Point B being our destination and point A being our current position, constantly being updated by the satellites. And for the most part, we use the GPS to figure out how far are we from point B. So if you're doing a map and compass, where you're not using a GPS, you probably want to know exactly or get an approximate idea of how far you've traveled. So this is where pacing comes into play here. So what I've done here is uh, I've measured out 100 meters and we're gonna do uh, what I've learned how to do pacing from uh, the local search and rescue club. So let's get started right now. Basically what we've done here, we've marked out 100 meters on a flat terrain. So you can do this at a track or anywhere else that you know the exact distance. Here when I you start pacing, the first thing you need to do is figure out what a pace is. Your pace is, is uh, one stride uh, starting from either foot left or right depending uh, on your preference there. So basically every time that your foot moves forward that's a one pace. So or in other words two steps. When you're counting your pacing you don't really need to worry about how far your strides are. You just walk as you normally would. If you have uh, your backpack you can bring that too. What you want to figure out is the average pace on this particular type of terrain, which is flat gravel trail. So once we've done our three loops, or our three laps, we're going to get our average for our flat terrain, and then we're going to move on to the next part, which is going to be a wooded trail. We're all done the flat section here, and for each of the three laps, I did 64 paces, 66, and 65 paces. So let's average that to 65 paces for 100 meters on flat gravel Here trail. Here we are at our second uh, wood trail, and again, we did marked our waypoint, and we navigated to it. We are 96 meters straight line to it, but as you can see, there's obstacles, there's roots, there's trees in the way. So when we measured 100 meters, we're probably more accurate than what the GPS is right now. But just to give you an idea, the comparison. So for our wooded trail section here, we've uh, marked down that we our first lap we did 70 paces, second be 72, and then 71. So we'll average that out to 71 paces as compared to the flat, which was 65. So let's do our last one, which is the hilly route. So this is, again, we're going uphill. There's elevation change, a lot of more routes. So this is going to be a little bit more difficult. So expect here a little bit more paces because we're probably going to be shortening it up to be able to go up the hill. 12, 13. So again, we're just measuring where we are for our last uh, measure. So again, we're over a hilly root trail, a little bit more elevation. So again, with our GPS straight line, we are about 92 meters from our start. So let's uh, finish things up. We're done our hill route and we averaged out with uh, 75 paces. So uh, first that was 75, 73 paces, and then the last one was 77. So now that you've averaged out the amount of pacing that you can do over different types of terrain, you'll be in better measure to estimate distances when you're using a map and compass when orienteering, or you want to turn off your GPS for a while, or your GPS is broken, you need to know how far you need to travel. This is a good skill to learn. Do a search on YouTube for uh, pacing with Map and Compass. There's some uh, better videos that might go into a little bit more details. Pacing bees is a tool that you can use to help you keep track every 10 paces. And with practice, you'll be pretty good at estimating your distances by going on the trail.